So Draw.io is an online diagramming application that supports pretty much every browser with a non-trivial market share down to IE6, all the touch browsers, etc. This is the second of two tutorial videos that walk you through the feature set. This is the more complex of the two videos. This is more about the power features rather than general usage. There will be an online transcript of this video uh, linked to link, linked from the YouTube page. So, um, first first thing is that there are two variants of Draw.io that can be used with Google Drive. So there's the default single user version at www w.draw.io. Um, there's a Chrome Web Store entry for that. Um, there's also another version at drive.draw.io um, and the Chrome Web Store entry for that is called Draw.io Pro. For no good reason, it's, it's just used as a different storage mechanism. We needed a different name. So if you use the WW version, um, you cannot have real-time collaboration. If another user opens the, the diagram then saves it, it's a case of the last save wins. The, the version at drive.draw.io uses um, Google's real-time functionality that's part of their, their Drive SDK. So that uses a different backend for collecting all the changes that users make and for simultaneously broadcasting those to other users. Um, I've got an example here, I've got two um, two browser tabs open, um, they're both looking at the same diagram and you know, when you make a change in one you see the change in the other. I can't show you the other way around because that tab will be covered. Um, so so not only do you see changes being made, um, you see things like selection and so on. Um, there's also a chat feature um, if you open the chat in both, um, in both tabs or however many tabs depending on how many people you're sharing with you can all, you can all chat in real time as well. The reason we keep the two versions apart is the real-time system is a Google-provided service, and whereas it has very good uptime and works very nicely, we don't technically have any control over whether it's functioning or not at any one time. And if it goes down, we have to wait on Google to fix it. So we just um, make it an explicit decision of users to go and use that version as opposed to the standard version. So coming back to the user interface, um, and the user interface is the same for the real-time or non-real-time versions. You can rename a diagram by clicking on the uh, name up there. You just type in the new name and press rename. Um, the whole UI is made to look very similar to the, the, the Google Docs. Um, I don't think it's called Google Docs, but uh, the Google Drive apps, probably, um, functionality. So, for example, you can share you bring up the share dialog and you can share it with other users with various permissions um, as you can in Google Drive and you can share a diagram view only and it will appear view only the other person won't be able to edit it the permissions are uh, followed um, the icon the orange icon in the top left that will take you back to drive.google.com the drive UI um, you know you can move something to a folder uh, make a copy of you know all the operations that you need to move and rename within Drive. <coughs> um, in terms of the local storage version, and that's the version when you select device at the initial splash screen, um, it's worth noting that your diagram is not stored online anywhere. You're not logged in, so we have got no idea who you are or, or how to associate you with your diagram. Um, Auto-saving to your local file system isn't technically possible using a browser. Um, so you are responsible for saving. If you exit the diagram with saving, it's gone. Um, there is a warning that's displayed if you do that. If you ignore the warning without saving, um, don't bother filing a support ticket. You've just lost your data. Um, there is under options for both um, Google Drive and Dropbox an auto-save option which is on by default. If you don't want to be constantly saving, and the bandwidth is very low, you can you can switch that off. So in, in terms of porting um, diagrams from one storage format to another, I mentioned these three formats. If you have, for example, a locally saved diagram that you want to import to a, uh, a drive or drop, Dropbox file, drive or Dropbox file, just go to File, Edit, and there you have the, the XML of the diagram. If you just take a local file and drag it and drop it into that, that area, um, the 
uh, the XML of that uh, diagram will come up and just click replace existing diagram and OK and that will load up uh, your diagram so you can you can, you can also do file import and just load the file that way as well. Um, if you want to go the other way around, if you want a local copy of a file while using Drive or Dropbox, use File Download As and select Draw Dryo File. <coughs> um, that's a compressed version of the one above, which is the model. Um, the model is the old format we used. We switched to the compressed version just to save on bandwidth. Um, but we will continue to permanently support both versions because so we we have millions of diagrams stored in the old version, so we'll we'll never drop that. Um, also notable while we're on download as, if you want to get a a, a raster or a vector output, um, you can grab PNG, GIF, and and JPEG in terms of the raster outputs and P PDF and an SVG in terms of vector outputs. Um, back to the the diagramming feature set. Um, one one common question is if you create a connector, and let's say we've we've set it to be orthogonal, and we've put a big arrow on one side. Let's make it a diamond actually. Um, and say for example you want all of your um, connectors from now on to look that way, you can either right click, set as default edge. It's also available in the menu. Um, if you're finding it hard to get the context menu. To get the context menu on an iPad, you touch and hold is the equivalent of a right click. Um, it set as default edge there as well. So if I drag out again, the new edge is connected orthogonal with, with a diamond. Um, I didn't mention in the other video is that if you drag an edge to free space, it will create a clone of the one you've dropped from. You can switch that behavior off, which is uh, copy on connect and then it will just drop to free space. Um, the the options menu actually is worth having a quick look over. You've got things like the grid, you know, the dots in the background, um, guides, uh, when you when you line something up with another vertex, for example you've got a, a vertical line saying you're lined up centrally or one there saying the edges are lined up, they just help you find uh, alignments and dropping stuff. Um, Tooltips, when you hover over something, you know, if there is any tooltip, do you can, can you see it? Um, scroll bars, pretty obvious. Page view, if you don't, if you don't want the, the, the pages cut out in the background, um, you can switch page view off. One also misconception is um, how do you get more pages? You just drop something onto that area um, and that will create pages to cover um, to make it a new rectangular region um, that covers at a minimal amount everything you have on it and if you delete stuff the pages get removed. Um, mathematical typesetting. Um, there is a, a library called MathJax which um, allows you to type in, in a certain format. Um, I have an example there. Um, and it allows you to do complex sort of mathematical notation. It does slow things down a bit. If I drag this, it just takes a tiny bit longer to render. Um, you'd, you'd have to go to the MathJax site, mathjax.org. It's also linked to in the transcript, uh, and that will explain the various notation for for, for throwing this sort of um, this this functionality up. Um, the only thing to note with MathJax is that we can't currently export it in images or PDF. Um, but what you can do if you're using Chrome, if you go to print and then Chrome has a print PDF function, um, you can just print print the PDF directly from the from the browser using Chrome. Uh, I think 85% of our users use Chrome, so most, most people will have that anyway. Um, also under file import, it says you can import .vdx files, Visio files. Um, we've had a long going effort. Um, to, to support .vdx. Um, it's at a reasonable point where certainly all simple diagrams will import. As you get more and more complex, it can be slightly variable. A lot of people just, just tweak the diagram after it's been imported to get it right. Um, but we very much depend on people to send in failed diagrams. So if, you know, if the, the, X, the import is not good enough from Visio, we need people to send us the diagram so that we have good examples to, 
to improve that particular bit of functionality. Um, there's a languages menu, um, so if you wanted to select Thai, I think that's Thai, um, and as it says after you refresh um, that will take effect, so you click refresh and you'll find that pretty much everything will be in Thai. Um, the, the translations are a community effort. Um, there's a big spreadsheet of translations that, that translators have all got access to, and it's just a case of here's the English word, and, and please give us the, the translation in the various languages, and the, the spreadsheet is automatically parsed um, on each release. So anyone who would like to help who sees a whole, either the language is missing or there's some missing translations, please do get in touch with us. Um, I'll mention the support uh, shortly in the video. Um, and that, that explains the various ways you can get in touch with us. Um, the the link for support is there. Um, th that there's a link to a video tutorial that will change because we haven't actually released these two videos yet. So there'll be two links: video tutorial one, video tutorial two. Um, there is a status option, and what that basically says is our uptime. Um, we're probably going to change this because um, it gives a glowing history because it's basically the um, Google App Engine uptime, which is really good apart from a, a number of problems they had in January 2014. But we're probably going to change it to not necessarily whether Google App Engine is serving the app, which it pretty much always does. More so, you know, is the um, is Google Drive working is one of the key key questions uh, because sometimes people feel that our app isn't working because Google's Google Drive servers aren't working but of course if if we can't write we can't write but we should always say we've had we did have some teething troubles but we should always say when their servers are unavailable and stop you from making edits um, the main support link is this one um, and this tells you where to ask one general usage questions two if you have loss of data or functionality you should never have loss of data or loss of major functionality if you do um, we have a ticketing system you submit a ticket and and we'll get back to you as soon as reasonably possible uh, feature request there's a link for feature requests um, and for general chat it mostly belongs on the Google Plus community um, there's a Google Plus stream that only we can post to and there's a Google Plus community that anyone can post to. So if it's just general chat, chat go to the Google Plus community. Um, there's a number of posts on the Google Plus stream and I'm not going to go through all the detail of them, but um, if you go to the transcript of this video, um, you'll, you'll find all the links that I mention. Uh, one of them, for example, is embedding. If you want to embed a diagram in a web page, we give you a div and uh, a script to load, and you put that in your um, web page, and that will show a static version of the diagram. Um, another bit of functionality, if you have the file as a public URL, um, paste it in there, and then at the bottom will appear another URL. And if you're using Google Sites, you can paste that URL in as a Google as a gadget on Google Sites, and that will give you live updating diagrams. Excuse the building work in the background. Um, SVG in um, Shapes, you can either use you can you can use SVG remotely like you can any raster image. You can also use inline uh, SVG um, in Shapes, and there's a post on the G plus stream as how to use inline SVG shapes. Um, on, on Vimeo there is a Drawio channel that uh, one of our users has set up with some useful additional tutorials. Um, if, you're, if you're interested in using Drawio either in the Google Apps Marketplace or um, you already are using uh, it in the Google Apps Marketplace, um, obviously it's everything's pretty much as we've already described, it's just you'll always be using um, uh, Google Drive. Um, the advantage of, of if you do install it in your Google Apps for Business domain is that you can give permissions for all users and add a link to their um, uh, apps menu when, they, when they're logged into to, to Google um, to go straight to the um, straight to the page. And out of Google Apps for Business users, all new installations use the real-time system drive.draw.io. So there's um, collaboration is always available uh, because generally that's an important feature for, for business users. <coughs> uh, 
Um, one last thing to mention is we do have a plugin system. Um, it enables you to pretty much um, add and customize any functionality. Now you do need some JavaScript knowledge to do it, um, but we have we have some fairly random um, plugins. So if I add um, HTTPS .draw .io, uh, one of the built-in plugins. If you have an external plugin, i.e., one that's not hosted from draw.io, you will get a warning when it runs because you can run arbitrary JavaScript and and without a warning that could technically be a security risk. Anything that's hosted from our site, i.e. draw.io, uh, we've obviously written, so it's it's most likely to be safe. So here's an example. If we apply, it says it paid, the, the changes will take place on the next refresh. Uh, let's get rid of everything. And what this one does is it changes the copy on connect functionality to, to display a small dot. And the reason that can be useful is if you wanted, say, in a circuit diagram to have dots showing uh, connectors, say there was some uh, so there was some diagram like that, um, you know, and you could also draw another uh, edge coming from a connection point, a join if you like. Um, that's a way of sort of simulating multiple edges without having to actually draw multiple edges. Um, so it, it's easy to do little tweaks um, like 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 this. Um, and we do t we do offer a commercial service for for writing um, supported plugins for for tuning how the the app has looks and feels. Um, and we we go so far as you know you can. You, you can host Droyo on a custom domain with a plugin that everyone automatically uses, so it looks like a custom app uh, on a custom domain. Um, that's pretty much it in terms of functionality. Um, the support link we mentioned. Um, if you're using Google Drive, I mean, between Google Drive and Dropbox, Dropbox has a much better write rate. We've never had persistence issues. Whenever we write to Dropbox, it works. Google Drive is obviously a much, much larger system and can occasionally get slow and does have very, very occasional failures. Um, and obviously, that's very annoying when it happens. Unfortunately, we can't we can't control when their their systems go down. What we do is. Um, we do save revisions of a file, so here's an, here's an old diagram, um, and if you manage revisions, you, and you can click on a revision and download it. Um, if, you, if you download a revision or you go to download, if you want to know how to get that back, um, you either go to file import, as I mentioned, or you could um, open up the file edit dialog, just drag it in there, replace the existing diagram, and that's that's the file I just downloaded from Drive. So if, if you do have an outage or you feel that you've lost data from Google Drive, it's worth having a look at the revisions and seeing whether or not you can restore from a revision. We, we create revisions on opening a file, on saving a file in every hour. So um, that does add a small amount to your drive size. It should be negligible, but it obviously it gives you a, a fallback. In terms of cost and, um, and lifetime of the product, um, everything is free. Um, we've always promised that once you start using our product within an integration, uh, you won't be charged for the license at any point. Um, any pr pricing, if there were to be any, would only apply to a new user after we announce it. So if at this point in time you start using Dryo either directly or via integration, you will not be charged at any point further down the line for the functionality you currently have. Um, as a business, we sell the underlying technology called MX Graph, and charging for Draw.io is not and continues not to be in our business plans. So, in Draw using Draw, and if you have any questions, please go to the G Plus community. If you have any suggestions for the um, this video or the other video, again, please go to the G Plus community. YouTube comments are notoriously rubbish. Um, so unfortunately we have those turned off. Thank you very much.